Today is birthday of the Blessed Virgin Mary. And so we celebrate her birthday with this wonderful Mass and the blessing of seeds and seedlings and everything like that beforehand. But it's a, most important to take away from such a joyous occasion a very important spiritual note. And so that's what we'll do with our little sermon here today, is that realization that for, to, for Mary's birthday, it wasn't just the birth of somebody important, but it really was, between her con immaculate conception and her birth, it really was a very important uh, start to what would be the redemption of mankind. You see, God had chosen from all eternity that Mary was going to be the mother of Jesus when he would come to earth and he would save man for, for their sins. And because that had been chosen, it was the starting point. Now, it wasn't known to uh, Mary's parents, um, Jochen and Anne, but it was to be that way. And they knew something was special because they could not have children. They were having a terrible time uh, in that way, and it seemed like they would never have children. And because of that, they were oftentimes spurned by the community. And so finally they thought, well, if our prayers have not been answered for a child yet, maybe I should offer sacrifice. Always a good idea to add sacrifice to our prayers. And so they decided that they were going to go to uh, the joke and would go all the way to the temple. And he would bring with him uh, two turtle doves, which was a sacrifice for those who could not afford a, la a full lamb. And so he brought two turtle doves to be sacrificed at the temple. It was a very long journey. He went all the way there on foot, and he knew he was going to be away from home for quite a long time because of that. So he went there and finally made it to the temple, and he came up with, with a, you know, absolute pure intention and pure heart to offer the sacrifice for a child to be, to be theirs. And he went to the temple mount, and the high priest at the time, who was not a very good man, he was actually quite wicked, he made a judgment, a very rash judgment of him, and he had this superstitious type of thought that if you didn't have children, then somehow you were you were cursed by God. Now, we all know that to not be true, but that was this high priest's wicked thought. And so he mocked Joachim and told him, I know who you are. You're, you're, you know, you're Joachim. You you, God has cursed you. I'm not taking your turtle doves. I'm not sacrificing them at the altar because you're unworthy to offer. Joachim was embarrassed and heartbroken at this, and he went away from the temple and down outside, he didn't know what he was going to do. He loved his wife very dearly, but he wasn't sure exactly how to proceed from from there. And so um, he went and prayed, and he thought, well, I'll stay out here and help out this uh, this sheep farmer and, and pray about what God's will for me would be. Meanwhile, Anna was uh, very worried that uh, he, her husband had not come back, and so she was praying for his safe return. And at the same time, during their prayers, an angel came to them and told them that they needed to go to the gate outside of the city of Jerusalem. And uh, so they listened to the angel right away, and they went, and lo and behold, they both arrived at the exact same time at that gate. And they saw each other and knew that there was a special sign from heaven, and they went home together, and uh, they uh, would later on, nine months later, have a, a baby of their own, the Blessed Virgin Mary. And thus, redemption had begun. You see, our prayers are oftentimes answered in mysterious ways. And things don't always work according to our timetable. Things don't always work according to the way we plan it out, to the way that we want it. But we have two choices in those type of situations. We can get angry, we can get frustrated, we can get disappointed, and, and, and let it bother us, which is natural. But if we let it bother us and let it eat us up, we don't really gain anything. Or we take ourselves and we pray and we sacrifice and we let ourselves be at the mercy of God's 
providence. He knows the whole picture of our lives. He knows ultimately what's best for our souls, what's best for everything in our life. And if we do our part by our prayers, by our sacrifices, and by doing the works that we need to to meet God part away in anything that is that is of his divine providence, and we let the rest fall in the purview of his providence, then we're always going to find ourselves coming out better off because God knows all things. And we gain merits because of that trust that we have in the Lord. And we gain graces to help us in future troubles. And we gain strength because we know we're not alone in those situations. And we know that in that situation there, for years and years, Joachim and Anne had prayed so long and so hard and sacrificed so much. But because they trust, and because they were completely resigned to God's will, not that it wasn't hard, but because they trusted in God's will, look what came of it. Mary. And look what she became. The vessel which God used to come to her, to save mankind, to forgive sins. We must trust like Joker and man. And when we struggle, we find the reverse order there ready to help us. Mary is our go-between between us and God. We turn to her. We ask her for help. We ask her for peace of soul. We ask her for the strength that we need to follow God's will, whatever it may bring us to, to do what is right for our souls in the end. And she always rewards us with graces and assistance lead us on that way. What a beautiful message for each and every one of our lives to bring from such a great feast day, the feast of the Nativity of Mary, the start of redemption, the, the start of God's work to save us from hell, the start of the opening of gates of heaven. It all began with the coming to earth of a small child, Mary, today. May God bless you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.